Fangro has a very handy feature. It lets us switch off CSS grid support in a, a page view. And when we do that, we discover how the page will look like in browsers that don't support CSS grid yet. That's about 10% of browsers, browsers uh, on the market. So it's still 10% is too high number to ignore. So, but at the same time, we don't have to worry about making our grid design and, and non-grid design look the same. What we have to make sure is that the 10 or 8% of our users that don't use modern browsers will be able to see and read the content of our website. And there are many approaches to that. Some are using special uh, CSS feature called supports query. Um, but uh, in my experience, that quickly gets very complicated and it's difficult to track what goes where and what rules uh, like overwrite what. I have a simple approach that we will use in this project. So here is a, a snippet, code snippet, and we add it at the end of the body element. And what it does, so let's just take a look at the, at the code. It's not really important how it is implemented, but it's a, it's a simple style sheet and a few lines of JavaScript code that detects if grid is uh, enabled in the browser and if not, it adds no grid class on HTML. And this makes it easy for us to create CSS rules that only target element in cases when CSS grid is not present. But first let's start with the order of elements. We can see it's uh, kind of upside down, like the logo and, and the menu are on the bottom. Our title is white, we can't see it. Uh, okay, but let's also open a new page view and this one should have grid enabled so that we can easily see if we mess something up. So first let's do the ordering. Like the logo should be on the top. CSS grid is nice because it doesn't actually matter so much how elements are ordered on the page. So we can easily rearrange them like this. So now we have On non-grid view, the menu is on the top. Okay, and then we have decoration. We don't really need it there. Uh -huh. And since we just added our JavaScript code, we have to refresh the page view so that it is executed. And now if we go here, you see we have no grid. So we will select no grid and then we will select decoration class. So this rule will only affect the decoration element um, when grid is not enabled. And then we simply say, oh, we don't want the decoration element. But it didn't disappear, right? The reason for that is we were using responsive grid uh, bootstrap classes and now this one you see it turns the element back on and it has important so we have to use important as well so now it's gone And our important is stronger than important in bootstrap declaration. 
Okay, then we have the title. Again, we need to create separate rule. No grid, H1. And we will change the color to make the title visible. And then for the body itself, we need some padding. But first we create the rule, no grid, body. And let's add padding. And we can also add maximum white. so that it got, doesn't go to doesn't get too stretched out and we can add some padding on top to make some space there and actually let's see what happens on mobile views we just need to And say no grid logo create and we will turn off the padding or is it the margin yeah it's the margin and let's toggle the user interface make things a bit bigger And I think we did a good job. So even on devices that don't, don't support grid, our page will look quite OK. All the content can be easily read. And uh, there is nothing that gets in the way. So this is the easiest approach I personally found for creating fallbacks. Of course, it has one drawback, and that is that it requires JavaScript. So for those users who don't have JavaScript enabled and don't have modern browsers, they will still see our kind of messed up view. But again, you know, the percentage of such users is very, very tiny. And even for them, the content of the page is still useful and visible. And of course, to avoid this, we would have to do we would have to use supports CSS query, uh, which would make things a lot more complicated. And I think it's not really worthwhile unless we have some very special case to do that. Um, so with that, like our fallback, our uh, designs, different layouts for different device sizes, everything is done. Have fun. You can download the source code of this tutorial and play with it. And see you next time.